Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Joseph. In today's video, I'm going to be shooting two sets of beauty images and I'm going to be taking them with the Fuji X-T3 and the kit lens. Um, the kit lens is the 18 to 55 2.8 f4 lens and I'm going to be shooting on the long end of the lens. That is going to be the 55. But because the Fuji is a crop sensor, it's going to be close to like a 77 or 80 millimeter lens. And I'm going to be taking some of the portraits with my Canon USR with the 85 millimeter 1.4 Sigma lens. And we will be comparing some of the images that I'll be getting um, looking at them. Because Irene Rudnick also did her first impression using the Fuji X-T3. And she mentioned that there was this worm effect that people were actually complaining about and I did read on that but because I didn't own a Fuji I wasn't really particular about that but I noticed that what she was saying was present in the images I'm going to show you at the end of the video when I have the images side by side and I'm going to show you that um, truly it's better to preview or treat the raw files if I should say in Capture One when you're using Fuji rather than using um, ACR or Lightroom or yeah any software of that matter because i know capture one makes capture one for fuji and so they are able to handle the raw files from fuji a lot better so in order not to bore you so much let me just skip to the behind the scenes of this video and then at the end of it we're going to be looking at some of the images that we're going to capture from the fuji and compare it to the canon usr i'm going to be shooting today's images with the fuji xt3 the lens on is the kit lens um which is the 18 to 55 and i'm going to be shooting on the long end which is the 55 mm which is equal to about 85 mm so that means i can actually even compare the images with my usr and the 85 1.4 so i'm just going to start shooting and then we're just going to see what we're going to get so um jess red are you guys ready yeah okay so three two so I forgot to shoot my lighting setup and I just want to briefly talk about it before the shoot because you're not going to see the lights at all in the frame but nothing changed where it was positioned, the angle, everything was the same um, throughout the shoot. The flash power was also the same. I used my small deep octave from Photodiox and if you want to see the size, I think I did a review on that so I'm going to put it, the link in the card. You can check it out to see the type of octave that I used. It was on a stand um, directly behind me. A little bit towards the right so i can have a little bit of an angle to it but that was it and the reflector was below just to open up the shadows a little bit so that was the constant lighting setup i used throughout the photo shoot so forgive me for not showing it in the clip but enjoy the rest of the video if we actually do have one then it means that we are even done with the yeah so we can do some we can do some crops and Oh, we would. We would we'll definitely get something to choose. So for that, even this is nice. If it's cropped. Mm, I don't really feel it. Maybe this. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So we do have oh, like. Oh, we do have this one. Oh, yeah. Nice. That's good. Yeah. yeah. And you can see the fluffiness. Oh, we have a lot from here. I shouldn't hold it again. Eh? Um, okay, so you just want to wave it in the back and see what yeah. we'll get. Yeah, and the, okay. actually fold it like this. And then you can wave it from the front. He'll get a shot from it. Just be coming from yeah. the front. Yeah. yeah but if back. she does it, if it covers your face. Back. But if and you are, if I'm you're saying, holding, you get a, a, a proper front. Mm -hmm. No, Just but when she shots. does that, it's still it's, it's coming. But yeah. if you are holding it, you can control okay. Okay. so that we can see your face okay. too. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. 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 Yes. And even that one, you can like. Let's be yeah, going this way. Like exactly. Like this. Exactly. Okay. Or if you want to keep it there, just let me see. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. Nice. This is the perfect solution. So, <laughs> are you ready to make a mess again? Sure. So, let me zoom all the way to 55 again. Just go a little lower. Are we ready? So, three, two, one. Let's go. All right. Awesome. Beautiful. Don't cover your face so much with the fabric. Beautiful. Oh, I love that. Yes. Keep changing. Yes. Yeah, that was nice. That was nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Jesse, if you're tired, let me know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I love this. I really, really love this. I'm sure oh, we'll get some. So nice. It's like... <laughs> no, go back. Let's just do Finally! We finally got it. Ooh. Ooh. Let's get it. 
Dito ko mesi daw. Wow. Yep. Okay. Ano ba siya daw? Okay. Oh, this is nice. This one is like hiding inside of it. Oh, we do have a lot of shots. Yep. That one was good. Let me try with the USR and then. Let oh, me see this one. See Chale. this one. Hey. I really like that. I'm so good. Even the Fuji colors. Yeah, like everything is just so nice. And even, I feel like, you know, pictures tends to more nicer when you're just doing rough stuff. This is, this is stunning. Great job. Squint, don't <laughs> squint a bit more. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, it's gorgeous. More of an like, intense look. Beautiful. Very nice. Yes, that's beautiful. One more. Okay, cool. It's a wrap. Oh, yeah. I'm going to take some with my Canon and then I'll just compare. The files. So I've just switched to my Canon USR, same settings. Shutter speed is at 160, aperture 4.5, ISO 160, and I'm just taking a few frames. I can compare the files later on and show you guys, like on screen, how it looks like. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, yes, that's gorgeous. Now let's do some where you were looking away again. Yes. Okay, let's try and get one like so I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think the way it's been covering here was like really yeah. Let's just see what this one will do. Oh yeah. Still able to pick her face. <laughs> One on the left is the Fuji file and the one on the right is from Canon and this is Adobe Bridge like I mentioned. I've also opened the same files inside of Capture One and you'd see that already the colors look a little bit different, more saturated. So let me just look at them in Adobe Bridge and Camera Raw first and then show you guys what I'm talking about. So right from the get-go, so right from the get-go you notice that the image on the right which is the Canon I feel is a little bit more true tone even though it looks like it has a bit more green or yellow present in the image comparing it to the Fuji where it has a little bit more magenta and has a bit more of a reddish tone I always thought that Canon had more of a reddish tint um, in images but it looks like Fuji rather has a lot more and it looks a little bit more flattering especially with her skin tone um, when you have some reds in there it gives it a little bit more life so in, in this case I'm preferring the Fuji file to the Canon but it's not like we can't push and pull them to a neutral tone to or to something that we're really gonna like and then work from there so you can't see the 
um, the worm effect that Irene Rudnick or the other people were mentioning in the articles and stuff. But I'm gonna quickly open this in Camera Raw. So I've opened both images inside Camera Raw right now, and I'm gonna zoom in to her eyes because I noticed that is where it's in the entire skin, but you'd see exactly what I'm talking about um, in the eyes. So zooming into 400% and shifting to the eyes this is the canon eos r file and you see it looks so clean and so sharp i think the focus was on the right eye so the right eye has more details it's crisper it's sharper and stuff like that for the fuji it looks like it's a little bit underexposed even when you look at the histogram so this is the histogram right here and this is the histogram off the Canon USR file and it looks brighter. I, I use the same settings. If you're not sure, so I'm shooting at 4.5, 1 over 60 and ISO 160. And it's the same thing with the Fuji. It's also 4.5, 1, 1 over 160 and ISO 160 shooting at 55, which is the long end of the lens. But it looks like it's a little bit darker. The flash, nothing changed. It was the same um, flash power on the Godox 8600. But here, if you look at the histogram, it looks like it's a little bit darker on the Fuji. But when I go to Canon, it's like once it's shifting a little bit more to the right, it's a little bit brighter and you can see clearly. But it's not something we can't control. If I lift the exposure up a bit, you can see that we'll be able to brighten the image a little bit more. But I don't want to touch any of the settings yet. I just want us to keep looking at the differences in the raw file. So I'm going to zoom in like I did earlier on to 400% and do the same thing to this and bring it all the way to 400 percent and i'm just going to move it to her eye so this is the canon file and this is the fuji file so you'd see when it loads yes inside the eye there's this it's not smooth like the canon i know it's going to be shifting a lot because um they're of different sizes and aspect ratios and so when i shift this particular image i don't know what's happening but it's affecting the one below too so but you see you can see the veins it's, it's smooth actually let me just zoom in a little bit more let's say 800 percent and see it looks really really smooth so looking at the same thing but looking at the fuji image this time going all the way to 800 percent you can see do you see this break in the in the tones so it's not as smooth as the canon i can't uh, i'm gonna have to move again and it's beginning to become annoying <laughs> But you see how smooth it is here? It's not the same thing when you're looking at the Fuji file. All right, you can see it has this, it's, it has a wormy effect. So I'm gonna open the same thing inside of um, Capture One and we're gonna look at that problem inside of Capture One. So already Capture One has added its own presets and stuff like that. I'm not gonna deal with the colors yet, but for now, I just wanna zoom in again um, all the way to 400% and move to the eye this is the canon file um, i think again like i said it was sharper on the right eye so we're going to stick with that one look at the details in the eyelashes and the same thing with the fuji i'm going to go all the way to 600 percent and just look for her eye and now you see it looks way way better so actually let me get rid of the canon um, file here inside of capture one and yeah I think they're almost the same actually the eyes but it looks like it's also sharper on the right eye so this is a 400 percent zoom on the fuji file inside of capture one i'm going to do the same thing in camera raw so this is 400 percent and i'm gonna go to the right eye now clearly you can see it's it's not rendering properly if you look inside the right corner of her eyes for example you'd see it has this worm effect if you look at the skin right here it has this worm effect but inside capture one is rendering it properly it's able to show us all the details that are present in the image and you can see for yourself um it looks like capture one is winning here when it comes to processing fuji's raw files and so if you're a fuji shooter i recommend you just getting capture one to process your raw files open it inside photoshop and actually let me open it inside photoshop and see if that problem still exists so i'm gonna open um from bridge right i just want to open the fuji file from bridge inside of photoshop so it's going to take a second to open. Okay, so we've opened the Fuji file from Camera Raw and we've opened it inside of 
um, Photoshop and it looks like that worm effect is still there. So I want to open it from Capture One and see if it's also, if the problem is still gonna show. So right click, edit with and open with Photoshop. So it's gonna create a TIFF file and I'm gonna wait for it to load inside of Photoshop and then we can compare as well. So it seems to me, actually, let me bring this out. So this is what was opened with Camera Raw. And this is what was opened Capture One. And clearly you can see that when you open the raw file from Capture One, it looks way better in Photoshop than if you do in Camera Raw or any other Adobe product. So zooming into the eyes you can see the worm effect here like you mentioned it looks better now but when i zoom in from the one that was opened from capture one it looks like it's way way better um it looks like processing your fuji files from um capture one is way better than doing so inside of um, any other adobe product like lightroom or adobe camera Raw or something of the sort so so thanks a lot for watching today's video. I really appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Um, leave a like, leave a comment if you enjoyed it. Tell me what you think about the video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye everyone. Okay, so I bought it. Thank you. <laughs> she looks so expensive. Why did you get an Android cable? No, you are. <laughs>